So what was your inspiration to quit drink and quit cannabis? Was that at the same time? What was your, what was your moment, or tipping point? With like alcohol, alcohol was first for me as well. And um, alcohol used to always make me feel sick dead quick. So I just couldn't drink much anyway. Um, but I did like a drink. We always used to go to like the pub at uni and have like a mm-hmm. cider throughout the day and stuff. Um, and what had happened was, I ended up uh, meeting my partner like three years ago. And uh, when I first met him, he didn't drink at all. And he'd actually had he'd gone through a bit of a thing with alcohol in the past and he wasn't drinking for his own purposes now. But he kind of was just saying to me, like, you don't really need to drink. Like, why would you drink kind of thing? And I also was aware of the whole al ghoul thing in the way that um, alcohol it opens you up to negative spirits and so mm. that's why they're called spirits and they they open you up to negative and positive spirits but it does lower your frequency so you you're more on the mm. level of picking up the negative things and when you're in bars uh, it, it's i found a lot of bars and restaurants you can actually just feel that there's a lot of negative spirits about i don't know whether it's like the mindset of people coming out to try and suppress how they've been feeling and you know let loose and get rid of all the crap they've picked up that day but the energy around bars and restaurants that I've noticed more and more hasn't been like high frequency feeling amazing so when you drink alcohol you pick up the same negative energy you almost like consciously leave your body and allow for other uh, vessels to then take you for a ride kind of thing and Mm -hmm. people react in ways they don't mean to and the next day they're like god that wasn't me I completely blacked out I didn't realize I was acting like that because they're Mm -hmm. physically like gone someone else has come in and like and done that so there was loads of reasons why I was just thinking of stopping and because my partner didn't drink I kind of just eventually stopped too and then just like my body didn't really want it like there was just this one year, a year later at Christmas time, all my family was drinking and stuff. And when you're still around people that do the same thing, it's it's quite easy to be drawn back to doing that stuff. And so I thought I might just have one drink and I opened a bottle of like beer and I'd gone vegan then. So my options were limited on what I could have. So there's just this one particular type of beer. And I walked down to this Christmas market and I'm dead fussy now with things being clean clean like so I've heard like a saying of like um cleanliness is next to godliness so if I open a bottle and then someone's touched it with the hand but they've not got a clean hand I don't consider that bottle to, to be clean anymore to drink out of so I'd had this fresh bottle and it was the first drink I was going to have in ages and I walked down to the market and then I saw someone I'd not seen in ages and I was like, oh, hey, they gave me a hug. And the whole uh, sleeve of their jacket just brushed along the top of my bottle like that. And I was literally just like, the angels and spirits are literally just telling me not to have that drink because they, they know that I wouldn't want to drink it once it's not clean. And the, the minute like, I met her and she just did that, I was like, I'm not meant to have this drink. So I just like, I gave it to someone else. And then that was it. I've not had, it, had one since um, And so I've not really wanted to, but weed was always like, I still carried on with that because that was like, I didn't see it as bad as alcohol. And it was something that I just felt made me more creative. It made me nicer and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I still smoked cigarettes as well. So even when I tried quit smoking cigarettes, the weed would still just like give me that thing. So I stopped smoking ciggies and I'm still smoking weed. And then again, it was like my partner was just saying like, um, he didn't smoke weed and he was just kind of saying like you don't really need to and um I was also I'd been trying to quit because I just had so many times where I was planning on doing stuff throughout the day having a really productive day and then I'd wake up I'd have to have a smoke because I just had to I I was I was addicted and you know you're saying it's a psychological thing um but the feel good chemicals that came from smoking it I was addicted to them and I just kept having to have it all the time um mm-hmm. and it was just eventually like knowing that I, I should at least get a hold of it so that I could smoke as and when as opposed to needing to smoke every day um mm. and what must have just happened is I kind of like stopped uh my boyfriend had taught me this technique on how to uh get rid of your your like addictions and stuff and so I'd done that and then I was able to stop 
and I have had some since but it made me really anxious really quickly and I think that like I just don't get the same out of it anymore as, as I would and mm. so I don't bother with it now but I don't see it as a negative thing and I know a lot of people still get good stuff out of it but for me I think it's done what it needed to do like mm -hmm. the years that it did it served its purpose and now that's it really um but I wanted to ask you as a last thing and um, it's just going back to the cold showers but also mainly breath work because it's mm -hmm. reminded me of this whole addiction thing I've tried like Wim Hof's breathing techniques and you can feel so high off your own supply <laughs> that's what he says you can feel so high that if you were su suffering with withdrawals you're really craving something like you're trying to quit smoking and you're just craving a cigarette if you did some of that breath work you feel so high and buzzing and refreshed that I think it could help get rid of that craving even if it's just temporarily and it could really yeah. help you with overcoming addictions yeah with the cold water stuff is the breathing half of it as well or is it separate separate it, they, can, they can work separately or you can bring them together um real crucial point is that I was just talking to a client to this about this today is that as we've said about our addiction to comfort and it can come in many forms whether it be alcohol or cannabis or junk food or like sugar or whatever it is it's comfort that we're seeking and the reason why because it's so strange to think like breath works so we all have this capability of just being able to breathe in a certain way and bring all this goodness to us so why why isn't everyone doing it mm. it's like it's mind-blowing why don't i do it myself why does it take effort for me to do it and why do i go days on end without doing the practice that i know and have experienced deeply will bring more joy will bring more focus will bring more flow creativity into my life why do i continue to slip and have to put myself like back on the track of it and it's because the discomfort comes first and the benefit comes second mm -hmm. whereas with alcohol for example the the benefit is immediate you have that first sip of wine before mm -hmm. the alcohol has even entered your blood your tongue sends signals to your brain to release dopamine mm -hmm. before the actual alcohol is even in your bloodstream and so you get that feel good instantly with no extra effort other than pouring yourself a glass but the discomfort comes later the discomfort comes when your alcohol blood level starts to dip when you wake up the next day with an absolute banging headache and you when your whole day is a write off because of mm -hmm. the night out that you've had the night before and but we can't see that in the moment of stress we don't think about the the, the discomfort that the negative habit is going to cause we just see the relief from the moment mm -hmm. so to add more discomfort to this moment seems illogical mm -hmm. but it actually makes perfect sense to add more discomfort because it takes us out of our mind it takes us out of that narrative running wild and jumping in every direction it it consolidates our suffering into one manageable thought process of fuck it's cold mm. or breathe just breathe breathe when you're doing the Wim Hof and you it's like very strenuous and physically taxing to do mm. or and hit workout or exercise or whatever but you come out the other side and your body's just released all this beautiful endorphins and all this serotonin running through your veins, oxytocin running through your veins, a dopamine hit that you're a natural, um, healthy amount of dopamine that's released in your system. And there is no poisonous effect. There's no like negative aftermath. It's just the discomfort of the process. Mm -hmm. um so yeah that's that's a it's, a it's a thing that comes off a lot it's like it's crazy how these simple things are changing 
science when we've all got access to a cold shower we've all got access to the breath we've all got access to just like get the body moving and do a little workout Mm -hmm. um but we don't do it because it's uncomfortable but it's just breaking through that uncomfortable and knowing that the positive that it's going to bring on the other side is so much better than the positive effect of a negative dopamine hit like scrolling on social media like reaching for the sugary junk food like reaching for the booze or smoking a spliff and like those things have the place they're not to be completely demonized but it's to just say when we rely on those things to satiate us when we rely on those things as like our primary means of feeling good Mm -hmm. then we give up our power to be in control of our own mood and we're constantly relying on something else and that's when it's an addictive quality because we need it to survive Mm -hmm. whereas actually just moving your body you don't have to put anything into yourself to move your body just connecting with your breath you could be locked in a jail cell and you could be able to do the Wim Hof method you could be able to do you you probably only get cold showers as well. You, <laughs> but you could do like a hit workout or whatever, or some yoga or whatever. And it's really just bringing it back to basics and helping us connect with ourselves. But it's, mm. um, it's the I think is the main part of any spiritual journey. And something that has made me think about as well the whole kind of letting go of it's. There's, there's an element of like self-sacrifice to live in life, I think, and especially the spiritual journey, for me anyway. And I believe that, obviously, it's not only going to help you in this life, but when you pass on as well, I believe that if you've still got emotional attachments to this life, if you've not been able to let go of your emotional attachments, then you're back on the wheel, baby, and you're coming back no matter what because you, you just draw yourself there, your emotions draw yourself back. So we can't ascend if we are still stuck and attached to these things. And I'm not saying that you have to give up everything and be a monk, but you have to be able to let go if you need to. And this is the whole marijuana thing with me as well. Let go if you need to. And then you can have those things again now and then, the the quick pleasures. You can indulge in those things now and then. But to not have it like every day and be addicted to it, to be able to break that cycle and then have control over it yourself and choose when you want those things not just because you've Mm -hmm. you've smelt something or you've seen an advert and now you you suddenly want a burger and stuff like that but to just have that control of yourself and let go of your emotional attachments i think it has so much more value even than just in this life but in when you do cross as well (laughs) Mm -hmm. so 100% it's it's taking responsibility for your own well-being for your own happiness and i think a lot of the time we blame work we blame circumstance we blame our partners or someone else in our life our parents our siblings our friends we blame them for causing us this dis-ease inside us that then triggers us to look for a solution to that disease mm. i.e i've had a bad day at work so i need a glass of wine to unwind mm-hmm. and like that could be fine if you have the odd day the odd bad day of work and then every now and then you have a glass of wine to unwind like that's kind of what it's there for but if you're having multiple bad days a week and relying on the wine multiple days a week mm-hmm that can snowball so quickly and the bad thing about alcohol is the negative repercussions of the next day of drinking can actually cause you to have the bad day at work and then you think it's the answer but actually it's you think it's the solution but actually it's the cause of the problem and that's a that's a slippy slope Mm -hmm. that's a really good point to make and it'll help anyone who's been thinking about these things it'll help them just kind of like be able to assess their own situations more and hopefully we can give people a bit of inspiration that you can go sober if you want to and life's still fun isn't it like oh 100 <laughs> percent. anybody listening now this is not doom and gloom and this is not um sh- shaming anyone like fuck me we need to let go of shame like there's nothing shameful in the actions that you were doing now that are causing you discomfort there's nothing to be ashamed of it's just that we all we're doing here is recognizing that there is another option for you to try 
it's not like you have to give up something that is bringing you joy or is being your comfort blanket. It's, it's about giving something up that's actually holding you back. And then when you do that and you step into that place of it feels uncomfortable at first, it's nervy, it's full of fear, all of a sudden who you were always meant to be starts rushing to the surface and you feel so full, mm-hmm. you feel so alive, you feel so connected with people you feel so fulfilled, Mm -hmm. you feel so much more confident in your path and what you have to say, you feel like you're just being so much more authentic to your true nature Mm -hmm. and you can honour your true nature instead of just following the crowd. It's about taking, if if you feel out of control, it's time to take responsibility because how can you take control if you can't even take responsibility? Mm And that's, that's what it's about. It sounds like, sounds harsh to say like, oh, you're feeling shit and you're in a, and you're in a dark place. It's your responsibility to sort that out. Mm-hmm. But if you don't say that to people, then you take away the power for them to sort mm-hmm. it out. Mm-hmm. And that's, that, it's kind of like, it's, if you want to call it tough love, you can call it tough love, but I don't even think it's tough love. I just think it's like, that's just the reality of the circumstance. Yeah. If someone's in a really low place and you just say there, there, the world is going to change soon and then you'll be happy, then you're doing them a massive disservice because Mm -hmm. you're not empowering them to take control. And the only way to empower someone to take control is to enable them to see that it's their responsibility Mm -hmm. to act in a way that's going to be beneficial for their health and wellness and sever the ties that society is attached to you, whether it be like, your work, a specific job, an idea that you have to earn a certain amount of money, um, an idea that you have to be in contact with a certain someone for the rest of your life. There's all these changes, all these avenues for change that we can go down. And when we do, it's life changing. Mm -hmm. And that's a really beautiful thing to end on. Um, But as well then, like, everything you just said, that fulfillment, that is literally everything that we are like looking for in life. Like our whole, whenever we look for a partner, whenever we look for anything external, we're always, always just looking for that internal fulfillment and it will always be something external and nothing will fill it until you really truly realize that it's the getting back to yourself. It's reminding yourself of your true power, your true divinity remembering who you are like remembering there's so much more to this life than than what you think this power is the strongest most beautiful fulfilling thing you would ever get back in your whole life you're just getting you, yourself back and that is really what we all are looking for and the the ways that we were talking about like it might seem a bit of pain at first and then pleasure like going to the gym you can't be asked but the benefits you get from it, the health you get from it, like the good feeling, good chemicals you get from it. Doing the and it doesn't have to be going to the gym. It could be getting on a bike. Like I've recently just bought a pair of rollerblades because mm-hmm. of what I used to do when I was a kid and connecting to that inner child and like allowing myself, like I live in a working class town and I'm a, like, I'm a man nearing 30 with a beard, dry, like skating about on roller skates. <laughs> like I get the funniest looks. But there's an element of me that can either live in fear of what other people think, or there's that element of me that can go, I don't give a fuck. I'm connecting to that little boy inside me that absolutely loves to skate. Not only am I connecting on a spiritual level to the movement, um, it's also like my, my primary my um, primary flow activity. Mm-hmm. So it's something that, I don't even know, primary flow activity is like, something that you do when you want to cultivate flow for a workload and you go and skate because it's something that you've done since you're a kid or play piano or you play the guitar, that's a primary flow state. And there's also like the exercise benefits. So if you hate the gym, that doesn't mean that you're not an active person and that you don't get to feel the benefits from like activity, physical activity. And if you don't know what way you're going to get your physical activity from to release those hormones, it's like, Try everything. Mm. Try rock climbing. Try ballet. Try like jujitsu. Just like put like exercise doesn't have to be going and, and going under the bar and like bodybuilder style training or running a treadmill. Mm-hmm. If you hate that, 
then you're probably one of the sane ones if you hate that <laughs> kind, of kind of punishment. Um, but like, just because you hate it doesn't exclude you from the being an active human being. Like we're all designed the same way. Yeah. And getting active, we're designed to be rewarded for being active because when we're active, our ancestors were more likely to catch dinner and we're more likely to survive. So we're hardwired to feel good when we move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, a lot of people have been going on lockdown walks, haven't they? I just see everyone and their fucking dog about like, and we have as well. And yesterday, the fields have been completely flooded and I had my wellies on for the first time. And I was just going in this puddle and it was getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And I was like <laughs> wading in, like seeing if my, um, well, the, the water would go up to my wellies and stuff. And and it was so exciting. I'm like, I felt like a child again, you know, and you're just like exploring mm -hmm. puddles. And um, yeah, it's so funny how the little smallest things, even just walking can be that thing that clears your mind. It like gets your blood flowing around like, you can feel you're in a child and play at the same time like there's just other things that you can do if you need that if you need to feel better about things there's kind of like healthy ways of uh like sorting yourself out sorting your energy out feeling better without having to kind of go back to your usual addictions there's things you can replace them with initially to try and help you overcome that same habit that you can get stuck in Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's set, setting yourself up some prompts finding out what you love and try and try new things like you, you've got to try it how how will you know whether you love something or not until you try it and mm. i think there's always that fear of fear of failure like i said there like take up a new take up a new hobby whether it be like figure skating or like whether it be hiking or whatever and there's that fear in, in us of like oh no hiking is for someone else there's, like that's for other people you know, i'm not an active person people will look at me if i don't have the right boots on or and it's just an it's just a narrative it's just that negative voice giving you the excuses that you need to not do anything about the negative voice and it's just a mm -hmm. and it's just a cycle we have to recognize when we're being negative when we're bringing forth the negative reasons or excuses or whatever whatever you want to call them forth and acting on them recognize that actually this is coming from a place of like of negativity and do i want to be acting on that mm -hmm. i need to be more proactive i want to be more you know like put yourself out there try something new you don't mm -hmm. know what you're going to find it's going to bring an abundance of joy yeah Talking of new things, and you got a new course coming out online. Yes, it's coming out soon. It's it's been something that I've been working on for a while, and it's a, it's an introduction to the body. So there's going to be three courses that I've got planned now. It's like body, mind, and soul, and the first is about connecting with the body because I really believe it's like the foundations of of our our growth because we spend so much time in that place of being so mindful, not mindful, but mindful mm -hmm. and actually just being able to take a step out of the mind and into the body. Um, and if that doesn't resonate with you and you're thinking, what do you mean taking a step out of your mind? I mean, that feeling when you, when you, you do a workout that just silences you and you feel all blissed out or, or you do, um, you know, you. For for example, the the first part of the course is the wake up call, like we were talking about our our morning routine, and it's just getting the fundamentals right, like staying hydrated, getting the right light in our eyes, um, different to the way they set up our environment, like plugging your phone in the other side of the room is such a massive thing. Mm -hmm. Just that tiny change in environment changes the way that we could have otherwise just pulled the phone from under our pillow and laid there for an hour and a half before we went anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so there's like the morning routine of just getting all these little things into play. Then there's a, a yoga power flow circuit that I do every day to get my body moving. It's proper stress buster. Then we move on to breath work and then cold water therapy. Mm -hmm. um, 
and then just like like I say rethink and exercise like we've like we've discussed today um there's lots of stuff in there to just really set the foundations for someone who's new to the personal development world or just it's stuck in a rut like just physical actions that don't take much thought mm -hmm. don't take much like mind work it's just something we can do with our body to take us out of that that mm -hmm. space of our mind to really balance balance our attention our energy space yeah mm -hmm. so it's and coming up soon yeah and, and uh, is it like videos and stuff that people can follow along and stuff yeah so it's like a nine part um video tutorial thing um so you can take as long as you like or you can do it in nine days or you could do it in a couple of days mm -hmm. um and it's called soul focus academy and um, but it'll be all posted on my on my instagram um yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to it it's been something that i've been like slowly working on for a while and and like this is sort of new new territory for me as well um so yeah it's just it's just it's really exciting yeah Awesome. So we don't know where we'll find that yet, but just keep an eye out on your Instagram and then we'll see the posts yeah. and stuff. It'll be, it'll be on my Instagram. I'm going to be like talking about it a lot on my Instagram and like the course itself will just be linked in my bio when it's, when it's ready. But um, awesome. yeah, that's where I find it. Awesome. Well, I'm well aware that we've been on for like two hours, two hours now. Um, but, <laughs> two hours. <laughs> yeah. But just want to say thank you so much for coming on, Brad. Like, it's been such a wonder to talk to you because then it's probably been about five years since we've last spoken. I'm sure at uni, we were very different and like in different yeah. places of our journey. Um, and it's so nice to connect again and just see how much you've grown, like how like just wise you are. And thanks so much for sharing all that with oh, people listening much. as well. Like, I know that there's so much stuff you've said that people will really be able to like, wow like take on board and learn from and stuff and that's what you do anyway isn't it you help people help themselves so it's nice to uh, for you to kind of be on this journey of my youtube channel and to like you know help me out on mine and stuff i really appreciate it so thank you oh, it feels it feels very right mate it's a celebration um like, like congratulations yourself for creating this space for opening up this conversation like it's amazing to just be stepping into a place where we can unapologetically shine our light mm -hmm. and you're creating a, a space for other people to to shine their light as well i think that's amazing so thank you for having me thank you and we'll put your links um in the description below so anyone who wants to check out brad's stuff uh, it's brad jameston on instagram um, yeah. but as well we'll put the links in and yeah all right brad we'll have an awesome day um thanks and yeah, for having thank me you all right see you guys Bye. Bye. Bye.